Well, good day, everybody. Here we are in beautiful Western Queensland outback again, out near Julia Creek. Last couple of months, been doing a lot of road train work, doubles and triples, and a lot of transloading between uh, the drop deck and flat tops and shit, which means a lot of unhooking and hooking up to dollies. And I keep forgetting to do a video on ring feeders, which I've been promising people in America for many, many months. So I decided that today. I will. I saw a video that a fellow YouTuber made of how he hooks up his uh, dog trailer to his tipper in America with the bloody uh, pintle hooks and eyes that they use, a bit dodgy. And so I thought I'd uh, show a video on ring feeders. Now, this particular dolly, or converted dolly as they're properly known as, is a pretty high bugger. It's really high on the turntable and also high on the drawbar. And because I've got the drop deck, which has a very low ring feeder, you can see the angle, it's angled down a fair bit, so it's not exactly dead straight on, but it'll do for this demonstration. Now, here's a ring feeder, guys. This is how we hook up our trailers. Uh, or ring fetter, actually, is the word, which means German for ring spring, I've been told. I'm not exactly, I don't speak German, but apparently that's what it means. And um, to unlock the pin on a ring feeder, you basically pull this uh, locking wheel out. You can see that's in the uh, unlock position there. You pull that out, turn it, and then you lift this handle, which releases the pin. You can see the pin there is in the up position, ready to be uh, to be fed. Now, what goes into the ring is this eye on the end of the, the dolly draw bar. Now, this eye, the bush that's inside the eye, is a straight bush. It's not, uh, not machined out to a curve or anything like that, rounded out. It's a straight bush. And what happens is, as you can see the angle that I've got it on here, as I back the trailer back, the taper on the bottom of the ring will rub against here. You always leave it a little bit lower, not higher, because it has to clear the pin. But what happens is the thickness here of the ring, as it goes into the ring feeder, it will actually hit on the taper on the bottom of the pin. And what it does is it pushes the pin up as it goes past, which releases the lock, and then as it goes into there, once it's fed into the ring feeder, the pin will drop automatically back into the hole. So I'll back back and you can watch the, uh, the way it works. You can see here that the pin has dropped, but it hasn't fully locked in yet, but it also gives us a good view of the pin itself, which isn't straight. The bush is straight, but the pin has actually got a, like a spherical ball on it, and this allows obviously for the movement of um, the drawbar dolly as you're going through dips and over hills and bumps and that. It's got to be able to pivot up and down and side to side and twist in all directions. And that ball allows it to do that. And also the ring feeder itself mounted to the trailer can actually swivel this whole thing, can swivel backwards and forwards from side to side, and it also swivels a full, can go a full 360 degrees if you roll the trailer ass overhead, which uh, I've seen happen where people have rolled their second or third trailer and the ring feed is twisted completely upside down, but uh, and doesn't worry about the, the, the trailer that it's attached to. So yeah, that's uh, that's a ring feeder, guys. That's how they work. And you know, would have noticed that I had this block of wood holding the drawbar up to back under it to get it the right height. Well, it does actually have a drop-down leg. Um, some people have adjustable legs. One of our dollies does. This one doesn't. And some people also have like a wind-up jockey leg to get it the exact right height, which I think is a good idea. Um, but yeah, because as I said, it's on a drop deck, and it's a, uh, as you can see, it's a lot lower ring feeder than normal. They're normally up quite high and uh, that's why I had to use the block of wood to get the height right. So now when I pull forward, what will happen is that that pin is spring-loaded. 
Once it's locked in, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to use safety chains or nothing. That thing is not going to come undone. Once it has dropped in and it's locked, it's never going to come undone. And they're rated at uh, a huge amount of force. They can pull a lot of weight, and you never have to worry about it. I've never, I've seen, I've never seen a ring feeder fail uh, from being overloaded yet, so only usually if they're damaged.